Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. If this is your first time here, my name is Jody and you are a bit late. I've made 375 videos. Where have you been? Tell you what, I'll forgive you if you subscribe by hitting the big button that says subscribe on it. If this isn't your first time here, chances are you're well aware that the main focus of this channel, most of the pieces that I review cost 500 US dollars or less. I have long maintained that you don't have to spend a fortune. You don't even have to spend $500 to get a great watch on your wrist or even several great watches for that price. Now, under 500 US, the big sellers tend to be dive watches. That seems to be the stuff that moves in the biggest volumes. So a lot of micro brands, a lot of startups, a lot of stuff launching on Kickstarter, companies launching their first product, bringing their first watch to market, will tend to play it safe and tend to launch a dive watch. Perhaps even an homage, stuff that looks quite a lot like something you've seen before. Not so Badger watches. They have gone all in, bringing their first watch to Kickstarter next week, and it's a tonneau cased dress watch. They have to be applauded for that. Now, by the time you watch this video, these prototypes will be on their way to Japan. But if and only if this project gets off the ground, Badger will be sending me the colorway of my choice in about six months time. Don't just take my word for it though. The big man himself, Jory Goodman, AKA the time teller, he got a couple of prototypes sent to him as well, so be sure to check out his review if you haven't already done so. So a tonneau case dress watch with a Swiss movement for less than 400 bucks. Sounds intriguing, let's have a look at it. Intriguing indeed. So I've got two of these Badger prototypes in my hand to show you today. I will leave a link in the description of the video in the first instance to the Badger website and then to their Kickstarter campaign. I believe it goes live on the 17th of September. These watches starting at 399 US dollars for the first 24 hours. And Leroy, the brand owner, has set a relatively modest target. So even though it's not a dive watch, I'm fairly confident that this one will be going ahead. So I'm gonna start with dimensions and specifications. I'm gonna do some wrist shots. There's a brief loom video. I'm gonna pop one of these on the time grapher for fun and get some nice macro shots of the dial and a very interesting and unusual tonneau case. So the Badger Islander is 38 mil in diameter. Maybe 41 if you include those little crown guards and the crown there. Now, don't recoil in horror thinking it's a boy's watch or a lady's watch and it's never going to fit you. Tonal cases wear very, very differently. It's more about the lug tip to lug tip dimension, that being 48 millimeters. So it does wear like a fairly large watch, as I'll show you on wrist later on. Quite slim though, they've used a Salita 200 in here, short pinion, short stack, thin movement, that keeps this one down to only 11 millimeters thick, 22 millimeter lug width, and on the supplied leather strap, this one weighs in at 85 grams. So somewhere in between a nice weight for a watch on a leather strap. 316L stainless steel case. Now it is a three piece case. So although technically it's a tonneau, it's a kind of cushion case, Badger have gone some way to kind of modernizing it and just softening up some of the edges that you would get if it was just a one piece construction. If you get a tonneau case wrong, it can look like a bar of soap. So the fact that it's a, a three piece design with a smooth bezel and a case back has just gone some way to softening up those edges, making a more cohesive design overall, I think dead flat sapphire crystal covering the dial. Now the crown is not screw down, but this watch still manages 50 meters of water resistance. That's fine for a dress watch to be honest, but does sit somewhat at odds with the fact that they've decided to call it an Islander. So this is a phase two prototype and I'm assured that the, the finished articles, this represents about 90%. So the finished articles will be 10% better than this, but the case finish I must say is very nice indeed. As I said, plenty of different surfaces to catch the light and a couple of different textures as well. Vertical brush on the side of the case and on the side of those crown guards, but high polished bezel, polished to the upper edges of the case and the upper edges of the crown guard as well. And a nice little badger, badger branded crown. Now zoomed in on the dial and there's plenty going on here in a similar fashion to the case shape. It's a gear shade dial, kind of radio sunburst from the middle, plus applied indices on top of that. Badger branding, fairly subtle up there at the 12 o'clock. Swiss movement either side of the frameless date window down there at the six. We've got a triangle at 12, 
Arabics at three and nine and batons everywhere else. There's also a five minute track out there beyond that pattern on the center of the dial and individual hour markers beyond that. So I'll show you an angle there and you can see there's that guilloche in the middle. There's an outer rim where a kind of chapter ring rehope would be and a further layering just before the dial meets the case. The hands on this are kind of teardrop shape. Reminds me of the Dorenzo DRZ01 that I reviewed earlier on this year. Very simple needle second hand. Now there is some loom on these. I'll pop up a loom video very briefly here. This is a prototype. They're gonna change looms. They're gonna use BGW9. So you'll get that ice blue superluminova. That's the pattern though that you can expect on a production unit, but you can probably expect it to be a little bit lighter and brighter than is shown on this proto. Flipping the watch over to show you the case back, and I'm not sure if it will show up on camera, but the case back I think is gorgeous. Very nice straight brush end to end, badger etched at the top, Islander and automatic etched at the bottom. Custom rotor with Badger on there and just 50 meters, 316L stainless steel, the usual spec sheet, and eight screws, so it's a screw on case back rather than a screw down. But that little window, it's sapphire on the front, I believe that's a mineral on the back, just looks perfect. It looks like it was designed to fit in there. Some see-through case backs look like an affectation and an afterthought. This looks very, very attractive overall, kind of designed holistically. Definitely one of this watch's more unusual but more attractive features. Straps are either Italian leather like this one or Italian suede like the blue one. They seem pretty reasonable quality. One difference between the Protos and the production units is that the, the buckle here will be brushed rather than polished to match the case of the watch and it will be branded also with the Badger logo. So I'm always pretty happy to see a Salita 200 in the back of a watch for less than 500 US dollars. Definitely one of my favorite movements at that price. Now it's a high beat auto, 28,800 vibrations per hour. So you get that nice smooth eight ticks of the second hand per second. Hacking and hand winding, 26 joule auto with roughly a 38 hour power reserve. Now Salita state a set of tolerances and accuracy of plus to minus 30 seconds out of the box, but most of them, in my experience anyway, run to the positive somewhere between zero and 10. This one looks like a good one. That's all very good, but how does it wear with that unusual case shape? Well, I think it actually wears all right. I have got a seven inch wrist. Now there is zero curvature to this case at all. No curvature to the lugs because there aren't really any lugs to speak of. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it to you if you had wrists that were much, much shorter than mine. I think six and three quarters upwards. Obviously, if you're a big guy with a big kind of flat upper wrist, then this one will wear quite well. As I said, don't be concerned with that 38 mil dimension. It wears like a larger watch than that dimension suggests anyway. And there we are, that's the black one zoomed out for the overhead shot. Certainly very legible, thanks to those applied indices on the gear shade dial and the contrast between the indices, the hands and the dial itself. Taking it outside into some natural light and you can see how the light plays off the striations on the dial and off all of those different facets to the case itself. The mixture of brushed and polished surfaces there. Not sure if there's any AR coating on the underside of the sapphire crystal on these prototypes, but like I said, thanks to the contrast of the hands and the dials, it's still pretty legible. Not sure how you'll go with the silver one though. That won't be quite as legible as the other three darker dial designs. That's it sitting on my wrist. Zero curvature, zero curvature at all to the case, but I think it doesn't do too badly on my wrist anyway. So then what do I like and what do I not like about these Badger Islanders then? Well, overall, I do like the design. And as I said, on my seven inch wrist, I think it works quite nicely. I like the fact that they've put the date frame down there at six o'clock. The whole dial retains balance and symmetry as a consequence, and they haven't overbranded it with the little Badger logo there. And similarly, a little etching on the buckle to be and on the crown on these models. And I think the case is very well finished. If they can indeed make the production units better than these protos, then they're onto a good thing there. 399 with a Salita 200, nice leather strap. I think that's pretty good going for a first offering. And the case back is gorgeous. The brushing on the case matches the brushing on the rotor. The whole thing looks beautifully integrated. What do I not like then? What are my moans and niggles? Well, that crown is a little bit fiddly. Certainly fiddlier than you'd want to manual wind it. They could have probably done with making it a little bit larger in diameter. 
I understand aesthetically why they put those crown guards there, but it doesn't make it easy to operate. If you're wearing it as a daily, it's not going to be a problem because, as I said earlier on, 38, 40 hour power reserve out of one of these solitaires. But if you are going to be manually winding it occasionally, it's a bit of a pain in the bum. And the dial. I'm just not quite sure that they got the proportions of the dial right. I like the minimal branding and the rehote, the three layers, that all works well, as does that gear shea. But those applied indices on top, I would have liked to have seen smaller, thinner batons, perhaps larger Arabics and a more slender triangle. I think that would have made it more aesthetically pleasing overall. Just not quite sure the proportions of those applied indices are right. I think the hands are pretty good, they got that right, but those indices just don't quite work for me overall. I asked Leroy why he decided to call his watch brand Badger, and he told me that it was in reference to the Honey Badger, one of nature's most tenacious creatures and one that is known for punching well above its weight. So you can kind of see what he's driving at here. Like I said, he should be applauded for bringing something different to market with a first attempt. Not many people would have the tenacity to do that, and I wish Badger well. So there you have it, the Badger Islander, a tenacious first attempt at a dive watch, living up to the reputation of the animal that they named the company after, that's for sure. I wish them every success, they haven't just played it safe and come up with a generic submariner alike dive watch. And they should be applauded for that, even if you don't personally like what they've done. Personally, I do quite like what they've done. Bit of hit or miss these tonal watches, if you get it wrong it can end up looking like that proverbial bar of soap that I mentioned, but I think they've got it just right. I wouldn't necessarily be recommending it to you if you've got a wrist of about six and a half inches or less, I think it works better on big wrists. Don't let that 38mm diameter dimension fool you, this one is all about the length. And that case back, my god, that is a thing of beauty. If only the dial was as pretty as the case bag, I just don't think they quite got the dimensions of those indices and the Arabics quite right. Maybe the design language of Badger will evolve if this one does get off the ground in the weeks and months to come. Thanks for watching, I will see you in the next one, which will probably be our Rolex Submariner homage.